We are back at the Boaz Soccer Complex. Excited to have you with us here on the Mountain West Network as Boise State gets set to take on BYU in a non-conference battle between these two rival programs for Boise State. A starting lineup that will look very familiar to many who followed the Broncos last week in North Dakota. The goal scorers for them, Kenzie McMillan and Carly Cross, all four goals last week scored by the pair. Yeah, new system this year for the Broncos, and Jim Thomas talking about those twin strikers and how they were able to get in, find the back of the net for all four goals last weekend, and he was really excited about the way they played offensively up in North Dakota. Olivia Smith-Griffiths, an Eagle Idaho native in the starting lineup for BYU, alongside Olivia Wade Katoa and Jamie Shepard, two players that Boise State and really the country are certainly keyed in on because they are a dangerous duo. Yeah, nine players in the stat sheet already this season for BYU, but those are the two names that Jim Thomas said they had circled as the players that they have to take out of the game tonight to have a chance for success. BYU is set to kick us off, and we are underway here in Boise. It'll be interesting to see how the two teams come out at the start of this match. BYU, a team that likes to bury their opponents as soon as possible. Ellie Boren trying to square a ball. And that'll be cleared away by Boise State. New look for the Broncos, not only in terms of the formation, but also Michaela Justiniani, who was a central defensive midfielder a year ago for Boise State, has slid into the center back pairing with Jocelyn Stevens. That'll be something to watch as the night goes on in this match against a very good offensive team in BYU. Well, especially early on where the Broncos under some attack already early, as you mentioned, BYU a team that has gotten off to fast starts and gotten out to two goal leads early in the match so far this season, and that's something that Jim Thomas said they had to be leery of early on tonight. Vance throw for Kendall Peterson, trying to find the feet of Wade Katoa. That'll be cleared towards midfield by Boise State, but cut out. Bella Fellino playing it out wide. Another chance for Boren cutting into that right foot. Ball scraping the inside and blasted home. BYU flying inside two minutes. That's exactly what the Broncos were worried about, trying to settle in defensively early in the game to prevent exactly that from happening. And there's a lot of offensive weapons in the box right there. The Broncos unable to clear a loose ball, and then it was put home. It was Boren who played it in initially. It was touched on in the front by Ali Fryer. And a massive strike. From the penalty spot comes in from Bella Felino to open the scoring. It's 1 0 BYU. So, for Boise State, exactly what they didn't want to see happen after BYU struggled to score in the first half, struggled to create much of anything against Long Beach State on Thursday. They're moving quickly once again. This is Wade Katoa, played wide for Smith Griffiths down the right wing. Looking for space. Takes it all the way to the end line, puts a cross in, headed away nicely by Boise State and Asia Lawyer. Yeah, good job by Lawyer right there. She was right on the near post and did her job. BYU retaining possession once again comes back to Smith Griffiths. Tries to find Felino. Clean takeaway by Boise State and the ball for Macmillan to chase. Stratton winning that battle. And it's put out by Morgan Pador. A look at the Keys to the game for both teams for Boise State. Survive the first 15 minutes, manage the emotions, and be adaptable. For, they're certainly going to have to be adaptable going down inside the first two minutes. Yeah, Jim Thomas talking about how they wanted to not be caught up in the crowd early and then use it later in the match. When you see a goal that quickly, it kind of takes some of that home crowd out of it for a little bit. Broncos have to start to apply some pressure 
to get the equalizer, I think, as quick as possible to get back into what Jim Thomas was talking about. And for BYU, the idea is to play fast and loose and to keep their composure. Certainly seen that inside the first few minutes, but it will be a long night. And if BYU wants to come away with their fourth victory of the season, they will need to keep up their style of play. There's a lovely ball searching for Felino, who squares it for Fryer. It's still loose before Crenshaw comes out to collect it. Yeah, Jaciniani was actually beaten on that play, and Crenshaw had to come off her line to corral it, or that could have been easily a second goal already here for BYU. Lovely vision from Kendall Peterson, the senior from South Weber, Utah. She was the one who found the initial ball to Felino. There's Taryn Newkirk for Boise State. Huge impact player a year ago as a freshman, as a sophomore. Once again, stamping her role out in the center of midfield. And Justiniani will put the ball into touch. It'll be another BYU throw. It's a nice job there by Justiniani. She just shielded off Ali Fryer and then played the ball to touch, like you said, and just give the Broncos a chance to regroup here defensively. If you're just joining us, Bella Felino in the second minute got the scoring opened for BYU. That is why they have the 1 0 advantage here in the sixth minute. And Smith Griffiths finds her way out of trouble, but her teammate, Brecken Mozingo, unable to do the same. Nice control by Pador. McMillan knocks it ahead for Stone. It's a one on one with Leveni Vaca. And Stone looking for the run of Carly Cross. Good job that time by Jamie Shepard to get back and, and take that ball away, that pass away. Peyton McBride earns a Boise State throw. McBride, a transfer to Boise State from the University of Utah. So a little familiarity, in a sense, with BYU, the two schools being so close together and being in-state rivals. Lovely tackle from Newkirk. Ends up at the feet of Allie Chatterton. And her through ball will skip out of play. We're first sub of the match already coming in in just the seventh minute. And already, Leonard, we were talking about that crowd. You, the Broncos have had a little bit more of the possession here in the last couple of minutes, at least trading it with BYU as opposed to the Cougars dominating those first couple of minutes. And even that little bit of life there has given the crowd something to cheer about. So see if they can actually help the Broncos get back in this. And Pedora with the interception is going to end up turning it in to a Boise State throw in the attacking third. It'll be Chatterton to take, the redshirt sophomore. As McMillan puts the ball towards the edge of the 18 yard box. It's taken away there by Boren and the Cougars look to counter attack. Something they're so good at and and really what Jim talked about is they have to take that away from BYU as much as possible, but they are so dynamic offensively that it's just a big challenge for his young group. Wade Katoa overhitting the pass. And this is a BYU team just two years removed from playing for a national championship in 2021. They fell in that match to Florida State on penalties. It was their first ever appearance in the final. Here's a long, dangerous attempt from Kendall Peterson that just whizzes past Crenshaw's net. It looked like Genevieve was a little fooled initially on this shot, and then she recognized it was gonna go overhead and out of play for the goal kick, but initially it looked to me like she wasn't sure if she was gonna have to jump or not, and I think she was fortunate that it went wide. It was both a cross and a shot in some senses for Peterson, just trying to play a dangerous ball into the area and nearly worked out for her. 
Macmillan, nice ball ahead. This is Carly Cross for Boise State. Picked up a goal a week ago. Some nice step overs, finds the head of Stone who can't turn it goalward. Yeah, but that's, the, that's how we talked about Collins and how she can create opportunities for herself and her teammates. And a chance right there for the Broncos, certainly their most dangerous so far tonight. Lovely passing from BYU, using the triangle to break out. Stone can't keep up with Shepard. Bella Felino pushes on. Tons of space for Smith Griffiths. Finally shielded off of it by Chatterton and it will roll out goal kick. Chatterton obviously coming off injuries and a player that Jim said is the most technically gifted wide back that he's coached here at Boise State. You saw a little bit about of that right there, just doing everything simple right there to get the ball possession back to the, to the Broncos. Player with a lot of creative liberties for this Boise State team. She will join the attack and she will do it often. Helps give a little bit of width to this new formation for Boise State. This cross, find Stone. Stone gets a deflection, and Savannah Mason can't get there the first time tonight that we've mentioned the BYU keeper. Lex, Leonard Berry, and Aubrey Chatterton with you as we are just about set for kickoff between Boise State and Eastern Washington. It is a coaching reunion here in Boise between the two coaches for Eastern Washington. Missy Strasberg played at Gonzaga as a four-year starter. She was hired three years ago at Eastern Washington, but before that was at Air Force and a coach that Jim Thomas certainly knows very well. For Boise State, Jim Thomas in his 11th season. Aubrey, you got to spend many a season under Jim Thomas. They've changed things up a little bit this year, have the Broncos, but Jim still really a rock solid foundation of this program. Yeah, he's done such a good job and it's been awesome, honestly, to see how it's grown. Um, obviously it's only been two years, but I hear things, I hear things from my sisters. So it's awesome to yeah see where it's going. And this program certainly has been on the upswing ever since he took over. For Coach Thomas in 2018, he was the first ever Boise State Mountain West Coach of the Year selection. He took this team to an NCAA tournament in 2019. And for Boise State, they are looking to get back to the top of the Mountain West after missing the tournament a year ago as we take a look at our keys to the game for tonight's match for both Eastern Washington and Boise State. For Eastern Washington, we talked about the 16 goals, Aubrey. They still yeah. need to find ways tonight to be dangerous in front of net, but they also have to be organized defensively because they have given up at least two goals a game against all the D1 opponents they've played. Yeah, for sure. And also, you mean – the shutouts are important. Shutouts are important. They're one of their goals this season. So they'll find a way. For Boise State, finishing efficiency, one of the big keys. It's something that Jim Thomas preached to us when we got to talk to him earlier this week. Boise State had chances at home against a BYU team that is now number one in the country to put some balls in the back of the net. They weren't able to do that. They had their chances last week in Tempe against Arizona and Arizona State only scored one goal between the two matches. So Jim Thomas wants to see, can his players be clinical in front of the net tonight? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously possession's important, defending is important, but when you're in front of the goal and you have those chances, you need to capitalize on them. Um, Jim also made a comment of just the fact that you need to step up, but you need to step over this team. So I'm excited. And the excitement brewing in Boise as we are moments away from kickoff, Kenzie McMillan, We'll play the ball back to Morgan Stone and launches it forward as Pador is on the chase. Morgan Pador will actually get there. Send a nice cross in for McMillan that is cleared away and nearly a quick start for Boise State. Karina Fraley, the one who cleared that out and a foul it looks like going to be called against McMillan. Great start for the Broncos. Oh, the free kick taken by Cameron Willoughby. And the ball will end up right back in the possession of Boise State. This is Carly Cross, the junior, who drops it behind for Pador, and her pass 
intercepted, but doesn't go very far. Stone will get a foot on a pass, and it's going to roll over the line. They'll go into touch, and they will say that Peyton McBride was the last to touch it. it was her, between her and Grace Terrell for Eastern Washington. Christina Munoz with the throw. Finds the feet of Madison Kem. Maddie Morgan played out wide. The ball launched up into the air. That'll be headed away by Justiniani and Newkirk. Great defensive shift by Broncos. Organized in the back line. Ali Chatterton, her first opportunity on the ball, finds Stone looking maybe for the run of McMillan, who wasn't making it. Battle on this near side and last touched by Eastern. Mariana Henderson, who got the last to it. Here's Stone for Boise State, looking for runners, plays the ball wide. It's McBride who runs onto it, trying to find space for a shot inside the box. She'll turn back. Great look by Morgan to switch the point of attack, find Peyton McBride on the weak side. McMillan lines it up, and Willoughby will make her first save of the evening. The sophomore from Linden, Utah, all over the outside of the 18 shot. It's really back and forth right now. Someone, they're really looking to score. Really quick start. Sophie Drown punching the ball up ahead. Cross being held back. She will race onto it, take the shot, get her own rebound, and try to lay it off for McMillan, who's got a lot of work to do. And that's a nice tackle put in there by Riley Arribas. Great speed by Carly Cross up front. Cross, the junior from Anaheim, California, can really turn on the pace when she needs to, as you saw on display there. Here's McMillan. Trying to put a cross in. Got blocked. Ends up with Stone, and that will go wide. So already, Aubrey, we're seeing Boise State have their chances, and this is where that finishing efficiency that Jim talked about begins to come into play. Yeah, you know, they're getting good looks on goal. Just unlucky right now. McMillan's been denied, Cross has been denied, and Stone, they're missing the net wide left. As we move into the fifth minute of play, there's a good header by Stone as Cross gets impeded, but it'll allow Pedor to run onto it. She's got a squaring opportunity. She will find Cross who passes it into the net. Tic-tac-toe soccer by the Boise State Broncos as Pedor finds Cross and the Broncos go up 1-0. That is the key piece that they're looking for, the finesse and the calmness around goal. Great finish by Carly, great pass by Morgan. Just a lovely bit of dribbling skill from Morgan Pedor, worked her way down the wing and then the composure, Aubrey, once she got inside that six yard box to not just take the shot on, but to look for runners and to find the arriving cross. The composure is everything. That's what you look for in key forwards. It's how you score goals. It's the second goal of the season for Carly Cross. It's the first assist of the year for Morgan Pador and Boise State blazing a trail here in just the fifth minute. And Ali Chatterton working her way into the middle. She finds Cross. Beautiful ball up to Carly. Now offsides called on the far side. Kent Wang has the flag up against Cross. Unlucky, it was good read, good luck. I'm not just saying that because she's my sister. <laughs> An electric start for Boise State. McMillan ends up on the end of a free kick. Uh, passes the possession away. And it looks like Willoughby is gonna do the same. Cut out by Chatterton. This is 
Stone, time and space. Plays it back to Justiniani. Kayla Justiniani, who scored against BYU, her first career goal came right here at the Boaz Soccer Complex. Sophie Drown is onside thanks to that header. She was initially off. This is the slowdown and the increase of possession that Jim was looking for. While keeping aggression, you still need to maintain that possession. So Broncos are doing a good job of that. Yeah, one of the things that Coach Thomas mentioned to us this week, he thought his team kind of played on the razor, razor's edge a little bit too much in terms of when they had time and space, they would attack it a little too aggressively. And as we saw with that first goal, that composure that was there for a senior, Morgan Pador, to set up the goal, this is where for Boise State, they can try to slow that game down a little bit. But also, like you mentioned, Aubrey, they do want to take their chances and remain aggressive. Mm -hmm, for sure. This is a Lyric Baker for Eastern Washington. Trying to feed one through the middle for Terrell, but McBride will be the first to get there. Terrell will win the ball back. Nice bit of muscle, but her cross in the end, a little too close to the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Week, Genevieve Crenshaw. Ball right on the line for Cross, and it'll be just pushed over by Baker. So it's a Boise State throw as they continue their way up the field. Great composure by Jocelyn. This is Chatterton, and it looks like Mariana Henderson took an elbow or a hand to the eye as Chatterton tries to dribble right through the middle. Certainly reminds you of another Chatterton. I'm trying, I'm trying to teach her. <laughs> no, she's doing awesome. She's gaining that confidence, which I like to see. And Jim Thomas had a ton of praise for Allie Chatterton before the game against BYU. He said that she does things from the left back position that Boise State has never seen in his 11 years here with her willingness to get forward and her ability to get forward. She really provides that wide attacking opportunity for a Boise State team that has transitioned out of width. A, a former 4-3-3 formation is cross Tries to get to the ball in the box. It's her and Baker fighting for it, and they will call it a Boise State corner. But for Boise State, the transition, they've gone to twin strikers. It's more of a 4-3-1-2 mm -hmm. where the width is deeper now, and so it forces those wide backs to get up and create the width without a left and right winger. Yeah, no, it's, that's, that's what they need. They need those outside backs to get forward and create opportunities, goal-scoring opportunities, those crosses for those inside players. 1-0 Boise State, if you're just joining us, it was Carly Cross in the fifth minute, assisted by Morgan Pador, who is trying to set up this corner on the far side for Boise State. We're in the ninth minute of play. Pador swings it in. Stevens is arriving, headed straight up by Baker. McMillan heads it. Another header, and it's over the line. It's Carly Cross with an early brace inside 10 minutes. She doubles up her goal total in this match, and it's Boise State to Eastern Washington nil. I would never guess that the shortest player on the field was going to get a header goal right there. Just bounced around in the box and nodding it over the line from inside the six yards was Carly Cross, the 5'4 junior, skying for the goal, and after the goal, Jim Thomas pulling his whole team together, including the goalkeeper, Genevieve Crenshaw, to give them a talk. And we'll certainly see what he has explained to them. But for Boise State, the scoring continues to come from Macmillan and Cross. The two of them have six goals this season for a Boise State team that only has seven of their own. They're definitely the key players up top. They have a lot going for them. They definitely bring the aggression and energy to each game. Broncos technically did not score in Tempe. 
It was an own goal credited against Arizona and Cross once again on the run, although she's wincing a little bit as she does it. She's certainly looking a little winded. And after Boise State played two matches in sweltering heat down in Tempe, it's pretty hot here in Boise today. It's 85 degrees, which is nothing like the weather, certainly down in the Phoenix Metro, but still a hot night in Boise. Substitution for the Eagles. Kendall Moore is coming off and going on for Eastern Washington. Number 32, Becca Gator. Eastern Washington going to make an early substitution. Sprinting onto the pitch you see is Becca Gado, and she is going to replace Kendall Moore, the freshman from Yakima, Washington. A little more experience with the sophomore Gado coming on in the Eastern with Madison Kem. Trying to get some offense of their own started. Uh, Taryn Newkirk there to blast the ball away for a clearance. Absolute dream start for Boise State. Two goals on just four shots inside the first 10 minutes. And so for Boise State, certainly one of their keys to the game has been accomplished. And now for the Broncos, it's how can you flip the switch, keep the possession, stay dangerous, while also honing in defensively. For sure. And the defensive line definitely has great communication, great shape back here. So, yeah, Eastern Washington's struggling, not sure where to find the pockets. Christina Munoz with the clearance. Bronco throw in, trying to find Stone. Can't do that necessarily. And then a big clattering of feet as Newkirk upended Maddie Morgan in the middle of the pitch. And Eastern playing the free kick. Quickly, we'll just end up sending it all the way to Crenshaw. Good composure and patience from Genevieve right now, gathering her team, making sure they're all on the same page. She's telling her team to get up the field as she dribbles it out in a long boot. Stone on the wrong end of a rebound that ricocheted back into her. As Delaney Walker gives possession away. Broncos on the attack again. Cross trying to muscle her way past. Still battling for the ball. And finally a whistle comes. It'll be a foul against the over-aggressive Cross. 